Here's such a fun little number theory exercise I'm super excited to share with you and intuitively explain why this is true. So if a is an integer, then a squared times a squared minus one times a squared minus four is always divisible by 360. How are we gonna prove this? What's gonna be the idea? It's super beautiful and very nice to explain. So let's just dive right into it. So we're gonna first use a little bit of algebra, okay? So we're gonna have a squared, a squared minus one, a squared minus four. The first thing I always think about, you know, if you've seen a, a squared minus one enough times in math, you always think difference of squares formula. So we've got a squared times a squared minus one is a squared minus one squared, which is a minus one times a plus one. And similarly, a squared minus four is a squared minus two squared. So difference of squares formula is a minus two times a plus two. So we almost get the product of five consecutive integers, not quite, but almost. So we get a minus two times a minus one times a squared. So a is coming with a square. This is gonna be very important, okay? We need the square to say it's divisible by 360. And that, that's gonna come up in the proof times a plus one times a plus two. So that's our number and we wanna show this is divisible by 360. Now the way we approach this is we factor 360 into prime factors. And then we show that those prime factors go into this product, okay? Divide that product, the factors of that product. So how do we do this? Well, basically 360, 360 if you keep dividing by two, okay? So I could just do this in one go. I could just walk you through it. So 360, you divide by two, you get 180. Okay, so you get two times 180. Then 180, you divide by two. So keep dividing by two. And then when we can't do that anymore, you start dividing by three, the next prime number. Then you start dividing by five and so on. So two times 180 is two times two times 90. And then again, 90 can be divided by two to get 45. So we get two times two times two times 45. Now 45 is divisible by three, three times 15. Okay, so two is going to be two cubed. Okay, two cubed times three times 15. And again, 15 is divisible by three. Um, so maybe you saw 45 is divisible by nine. You could do that in one go as well. So you'd get two cubed times three squared. Uh, 15 is three times five, so times five. Okay, so now our task is clear. Okay, this is the approach to these problems. You write down the product of prime factors that comprise 360. And now we want to show that two cubed, three squared, and five, they all go into this product. And it's gonna be so fun. If you're enjoying so far, smash that like button right now, it really helps. And if you wanna really support the channel, consider hyping the video using the hype feature. It really helps the smaller channels to grow a lot. And subscribe for so much more fun math content. I've got content across all levels and everything in math. I'm a professional mathematician. And we're gonna now understand how to think about this very intuitively. Okay, so why does this go into that product? Let's do that. Okay, so to be very clear, as I said, it's almost a product of five consecutive integers, but the middle integer is squared. So let's just look at the product of five consecutive integers. a minus two times a minus one times a times a plus one times a plus two. Okay, let's understand this. Now the first thing I'm just going to say right off is that five, right? Five has to go into this product. Why? Because every five integers, there's always going to be a multiple of five, right? Every five integers, multiples of five, five, 10, 15, 20, etc. Every five integers, a multiple of five appears. So if you take a product of five consecutive integers, one of them has to be divisible by five, okay? Simple as that, very intuitive. So we know that five goes into this, okay? So that's a tick. Five is a divisor, five is a factor. Okay, you can say five is a factor, five is a divisor, that's a tick. Now we have to just keep going. We now have to show that three squared and two cubed are factors. Let's just look at two cubed first. Okay, so the way I'm gonna do this, there are two ways of looking at this and I'll show you the thinking process. The first thing is that numbers divisible by two appear every two times, right? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, etc. So if we think about it, either a minus two, a and a plus two are all divisible by two, or a minus one and a plus one are divisible by two. Okay, so there are two alternatives. A minus two, a, a plus two are even. Or we can say another alternative is that a minus one and a plus one are even, okay? So it's one of the other, okay? It's one of the other because factors, numbers divisible by two appear every two times, okay? Every two numbers. So now think about it this way. In the first case, we've got a factor of two into a minus two, a factor of two into a, and a factor of two into a plus two. So therefore, we've got eight, right? We've got a factor of two times two times two into that product. Okay, and remember, we, we're not using the a squared yet, okay? We're showing that even this number is divisible by a lot. 
And then we're going to use the a squared to show it's divisible by 360. But here we know that in this situation, we know that 8 is a factor. Okay, so 8 is a divisor. So here we could say that 8 is a divisor, and that's fine. Um, the other alternative is a minus 1 and a plus 1 are even. But then where does the 8 come from? You can see a 4, because 2 would go into a minus 1 and 2 would divide a plus 1. But here's the cool thing. Think about numbers divisible by 4. Every second number divisible by 2 is divisible by 4. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Multiples of 4 happen every 2 even numbers. Okay, or every 4 numbers or every 2 even numbers. So because if a minus 1 and a plus 1 are both even, one of them has to in fact be divisible by 4, which means the product of these two will be divisible by 8, which means that whole product will, will be divisible by 8. So either way, we would know that this whole product is divisible by 8. And a quick way of doing it is just to use the second argument. I just did it both ways to show you a thinking process. But we know that at least two numbers here have to be even. Two consecutive even numbers have to appear here. And then one of them has to be divisible by 4. So therefore, the product will be divisible by 8. OK, pretty cool. OK, so 8 is a factor. So we've got that here. That's also a tick. So we've got 5 and 8. What about 3 squared? That's where we're going to have to be a little bit careful. So let's get into that. And I just wanted to take a brief opportunity to give a huge thank you so much to Stefan for Ruby support and Alex and Nathan for gold support on Patreon and all my YouTube channel members, Enehota, Aman, Rob, and Shabid for their ongoing support. It makes a huge difference. Small contributions really add up. The exclusive perks that come as my way of saying thank you. And currently, I just run everything on the channel on my own, and I love it. It's a really fun hobby for me, but it does take up a lot of my time. And by having support, I can really outsource a lot of editing work, really grow this into a big thing. You know, I do this part time. I'm a professional mathematician. I do this part time, but I currently have 4,000 subscribers and I want to really build this and make a huge resource for all levels of math and small contributions, you know, even just a little bit here and there really add up. So if you're gaining value and you want to make a small contribution, please consider checking the link in the Patreon description or YouTube channel membership, which you can see on a desktop browser. If you access and log in through YouTube through there, sometimes it's not visible on the iOS app because Apple takes a cut when people sign up through the, through the iOS app. So it's better if one does it through the desktop browser if you're supporting as a YouTube channel member. So let's now get into the next final thing, which is to show that 3 squared divides that. And here it's important because 3 squared actually does not necessarily divide the product of five consecutive integers. Okay, so to give you an example, for example, if I just simply took 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, that's just going to equal to 120. That is not divisible by 9. So we're going to have to use the fact the middle integer is squared to show that this whole thing is divisible by 360. We've shown it's divisible by 8 and 5, but what about the 3 squared? Okay, so here's the argument. So let's now write out the argument. Let's look at the specific thing we have, which is a minus 2 times a minus 1 times a squared times a plus 1 times a plus 2. So again, Multiples of 3 happen every 3 numbers. Every 3 numbers is a multiple of 3. 3, 6, 9, 12. You can't escape them. If you go 3 numbers, you'll have a multiple of 3. Now here are the possibilities. What are the multiples of 3 in this? Okay, So it's possible that a minus 2 and a plus 1 are multiples of 3. right? Okay, Because every 3 numbers have to be multiples of 3. So this is one possibility, but there are other possibilities. It's also possible that a minus 1 and a plus 2 are multiples of 3. Okay, So I'll just write it like that. They also could be multiples of 3. Finally, it's possible that a itself is the only multiple of 3 among these five numbers, a minus 2, a minus 1, a plus 1, and a plus 2. So it's, just, it's also possible that a itself is the only multiple of 3. Okay, so these are the scenarios. Every three numbers is a multiple of three, no other numbers. So either these two are multiples of three, these two are multiples of three, or a is a multiple of three. Either way, if these two are multiples of three, three divides a minus two, three divides a plus one, so nine, three squared, will divide that product. We didn't have to use the a squared. Similarly for here, a minus one, a plus two are multiples of three, three would divide this factor, three would divide this factor, nine would divide the whole product. The only time we need the a squared here is when we have the scenario that a is the only multiple of 3, like in that situation up there. And there we need to know that we have a square, because then if a is divisible by 3, a squared is divisible by 9. So this entire product is divisible by 9. So therefore, in all situations, this product is divisible by 9, divisible by 2 cubed, divisible by 5, therefore divisible by 
360, that's the maximal number that has only two, three, and five as prime factors that always universally goes into this product. Pretty cool, right? And if you want to really get into this number theory, okay, I, I, I've been a little bit less rigorous, but I've given you the intuition, so it's pretty clear. But if you want to get into the rigor, he has a super fun video for you. You're going to love this video. It's a proof that, you know, this is a really crazy number. One factorial squared plus two factorial squared plus three factorial squared and so on and so forth, all the way up to n factorial squared, okay? Doesn't matter what n is. You get a lot of different numbers. As n gets larger and larger, you get these crazy numbers. How do you prove that's never a perfect square? Or is that a perfect square sometime? Maybe it is a perfect square sometime, who knows? So if you wanna actually see the proof of that, or understanding that problem, it's so beautiful. Check it out, it's gonna pop on the screen here. And another fun video, I made it super accessible. It's a very beautiful problem. The probability that a randomly chosen pair of numbers are relatively prime. Two numbers that have no common factors except for one. What is the probability it's relatively prime? It's six over pi squared. How does the pi come into that? You're gonna love this video, pop up on the screen here. It's a super fun video.